the seasons are changing and maybe some of you will be getting baby chicks soon and your first thoughts are likely to be how to keep them safe and cosy and warm enough and for tiny baby chicks that's very important a newly hatched chick needs to be kept at around 95 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 35 degrees Celsius, until its down dries out and fluffs up. Then ideally it should be kept in a warm, draft-free place at around that same temperature for the first day or so. But although we often concentrate on keeping baby chicks warm, we sometimes forget that it's just as important not to get them too hot. Chickens of all ages don't cope well with being overheated. And I recently had a situation where my chicks were at risk of getting too hot. So I thought I'd share with you what I did about it and remind you that chicks need to be not too cold, but not too hot either. In fact, just right. Let's have a look at a typical chart of the quoted ideal temperatures for baby chicks of various ages. You'll find these all over the internet and typically they'll say that baby chicks should be kept at a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, that's 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and with the required temperature decreasing by 5 degrees Fahrenheit each week as the chicks get older. Now those charts are usually developed by big companies who are raising hundreds or thousands of chicks in a commercial brood operation and I expect it's quite appropriate for them to maintain and adjust the temperature of their big brooder facilities on a set schedule. It's simple, able to be automated, and it generally works. But you don't need to work at that scale or even worry too much about reading a thermometer very often. You can do what a mother hen does. You can observe your chicks. By the way, if you want to know more about raising chicks with a mother hen, I have a couple of videos you can check out. But if it's just you doing mother hen duties, then you can tell a lot by watching and listening to your chicks. Look at where they are. If they're all huddled together under or around your heat source, then they're too cold. If they've moved as far away as they can from the heat source, then obviously they're finding it too hot. Where you want to see them is spread out all around the brooder area. And watch what they are doing. They should be doing all the things that baby chicks should do. Drinking and eating and sleeping and eating some more. and exploring their world and sleeping some more even if all they seem to do is sleep if they're pooping, then you know they're eating and drinking. And your baby chicks will tell you if they are uncomfortable, if you listen. Happy chicks are mostly quiet, just cheeping softly from time to time. If your chicks are squealing loudly, they are very upset. You will certainly recognize a chick screaming for help. And that's the way I usually manage my chicks if I'm raising them in a brooder box. I check frequently and make sure they're behaving normally and look and sound happy. And as they grow up, I open up the brooder box and allow them to roam further away from the heat source as and when they want to. My brooder box is in my garage, so the temperature is usually fairly even and it's pretty easy to keep an eye on. 
but recently I had planned to be away for a whole day on a day when the weather forecast predicted 31 degrees Celsius. I knew I couldn't leave my chicks inside my uninsulated garage with the doors all closed up and the sun beating down on the iron roof or they'd be at risk of heat exhaustion. So my solution was to send my chicks on a camping trip, just to the backyard, in a temporary makeshift chick tent. I have used a kind of tent for raising chicks before, such as this low bivouac that I used for a mother hen and her one chick. I had this white metal frame that's actually bits from a temporary carport. I've just put together enough pieces to make a frame a bit over 2 metres by 1 metre and I've used it over my garden beds draped with bird netting. I put the frame inside the cage from our trailer to give the walls a bit of security against boisterous chicks who might push against the bird fabric netting. And inside I put my insulated brooder box raised up off the ground to keep the cardboard dry. I pulled a cheap blue tarpaulin over half the frame to provide shade from the hot sun and also keep everything dry if it rained. The tarpaulin is wrapped around the windward end, so although it's cool with good airflow, it's not drafty. Of course, I added the chick's food and water and a little perch for them. This is all situated underneath the eaves of our house, so fairly weatherproof, but of course I was careful to use an extension cord that was rated for exterior use, because the power for the chick's heat source was just plugged in through the bathroom window. The chicks were very happy here. And soon started exploring their new world. They very quickly discovered their food and water just outside the brooder box. It's a good idea to have the food and water a little away from the heat source. In nature, the chicks would venture away from Mama's warmth to eat, only returning to beneath her feathers if they get cold or tired. They were a little wary of the step at first, but soon took a courageous leap to discover the delights of grass beneath their feet. At 14 days old, chicks can fly unexpectedly high. They were soon jumping up and down, confidently claiming the whole area as their own. The partly closed door is deliberate, not only to keep it warm inside the brooder box, but also because chicks need to learn the cognitive concept of visual occlusion and object permanence. In other words, that the food and the grass is still outside, even when they can't see it. This is important for free-ranging chickens, who need to find their way back to a hen house that might no longer be in their direct line of sight. And I had to add some plastic mesh with smaller holes when I discovered that the chicks would squeeze through the gaps in the metal grid. I gave them a low perch inside the brooder box. But soon discovered that the high perch outside quickly became the favourite place to snooze away a summer afternoon.
I had covered the whole thing in bird netting to keep the sparrows from eating the chick crumble. So rather than climbing right inside every time I needed to fill up their feed, I figured out a way to pass a hollow tube through the netting and funnel the feed down that way. Although I had put all this together very quickly when I needed a solution for that really hot day, it worked out so well that I just let the chicks stay there. Here they are at five weeks old, getting their first look at the grandpa's feeder and looking very suspicious of this strange new thing. Although they are too small to make it open by their body weight, this is the first step in training them to use it properly. And a couple of days later, when they were comfortable around it, I set it to move just a little when they stepped on and off. The chicks enjoyed their campsite so much and it worked out so well that I let them stay there right up until it was time to integrate them into the main flock. And since it worked so well, I wanted to share it with you. As you probably know, I very seldom tell anybody what they should do about their chickens. The right thing to do is almost always influenced by your particular situation and you are the best person to make your decision about what's best. But I do try to share what I've learned and experienced so that you can be in the best position to make the right decision for you and your flock. So I hope this video might spark some of your ideas when you need to adjust the accommodation for your chicks. And remember that although chicks need to be kept warm, it's actually even more important that they don't get too hot. And maybe a good way to keep their cool is to go camping. I hope you enjoyed this video and it's given you a few good ideas. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hmm, I need a title for my new video about moving my chicks to a tent in hot weather. How about this one? Maybe it's not quite what I had in mind. It might give people the wrong idea. Let's get back to the chickens in my garden.